Good afternoon everyone, it's David Schlotthauer here with another detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion for May 24th, 2024 on this fantastic Friday. So the first thing that we're going to be looking at here is a seven day graphical tropical weather outlook created by the National Hurricane Center in Miami, Florida, and we can clearly see there is a low chance of tropical formation for this disturbance to get organized. And we'll briefly read this to you because this is my job to make sure you guys learn and understand on what is going on in the Atlantic. So for the Southwestern Atlantic, a trough of low pressure is producing disorganized showers and thunderstorms a few hundred miles to the northeast of the central Bahamas. An area of low pressure is forecasted to form this uh, with this system roughly halfway between Bermuda and Hispaniola later today. Although environmental conditions are not conducive, some slight subtropical or tropical development is possible over the next couple of days while the system moves northeastward. And you can see here, there is a 10% chance of tropical formation in the next two days, and there is a 10% chance of tropical formation in the next seven days, which are both low chances. So once again, there is a 10% chance for tropical formation over in this area that the National Hurricane Center has highlighted just to the south of Bermuda, which is our little island right here. You can't miss it at all. And again, X marks a spot. You'll see different colors, yellow being the lowest, orange being medium chances of tropical formation, and reds being higher chances of tropical formation. There is the key on the very bottom of the screen. So now, what does this actually look like on our visible satellite imagery provided by Dr. Levi Cowan at tropicaltidbits.com? So we can see here, on the visible where we do have our area of disturbed weather this is not impacting anyone other than ship interests that are cruising along the waters here so getting some heavy rainfall some gusty winds that's all you're getting but this is going to clip bermuda over the next couple of days and this could bring more heavier rainfall as the northern fringe of this kind of moves on through now we have another area to watch now it's not dubbed by the national hurricane center it is down here right now over the southern atlantic actually this far southwestern atlantic in the main development region this is gonna not cause a whole lot of problems as it kind of skirts its way across central america however the background state is going to change over the next week which could eventually allow this area to kind of congeal somewhere over here in the southwestern Caribbean, eventually possibly even in portions here of Mexico into a monsoonal gyre. And that's when we could start looking at for some tropical development here in the long term, other than our system that is moving ever um, so um, rather fast here to the northeast that is going to clip Bermuda. But otherwise, for the time being, the Atlantic region remains fairly quiet as we do have some of that shear that remains from the winter season that is kind of carving its way across the main development region in towards Africa, keeping any significant tropical waves at bay other than the one that we're watching over here to its south. Now, with that being said, we're actually going to look at our GFS global computer model that is very important in forecasting any tropical formation here. So the image that you're actually looking at here is the global forecasting system, 850 millibar, which is the level of the atmosphere. So about 5,000 feet above sea level. This is the geopotential height and um, pattern, the lines that you see here. So this is a plot system. So lines here are geopotential height. Cyclonic relative vorticity is a shaded colors that you see here, yellow, oranges, and reds. And then the wind barbs and knots are these little flags that you see. So this is kind of a pretty much a three in one image that Tropical Tidbits Dr. Levi Cowan has provided free of use on his website really cool stuff right so we're going to put this into motion here in just a second but i wanted to point out a couple of features here is our weather system that subtropical like system very elongated area of low pressure really not a whole lot to be uh, to worry actually wait yeah that is the area or it might be this area either way there it's a jumbled mess actually at the moment actually 
yeah, that is the area that uh, NHC is monitoring. So very jumbled, but you get the idea right there is where we might have a little bit of enhanced spin going on. And then here's our area to watch down here. Very, very minuscule. Not a whole lot with that system, but it's going to set up for what's to come potentially towards the end of the forecast period here. We have a good sprawling ridge of high pressure out here in the wet eastern Atlantic, Central Atlantic, the Azores, Bermuda High, helping to keep things in check here. The Saharan dust coming off of Africa, this big sprawling ridge of high pressure. But we all know the pattern is going to change eventually, and there are signs of that coming beyond the GFS model scope of things. So let's put this in a motion over the next couple of days. And we can see there's our disturbance moving out to sea. Really not much with that. Very elongated, maybe some frontal futures. Whereas we have this nice good ridge of high pressure that is still anchored across the Azores Islands. Even for portions here of um, the, uh, say, the Cabo Verde Islands. But there is kind of our jumbled mess down here across Central America. But watch what happens here. Watch what happens to that disturbance. We start getting a little area of low pressure that tries to develop down here. Now, I don't like picking anything that I see that is just there for a reason, right? Every little spin that I pick out, right? I'm not trying to do that in this video, but I'm looking for signals, early signals that could lead us into a more active period here getting into mid-June. It's probably going to be mid-June when we start seeing things light up really in the Atlantic, part of the MJO that I'm about to show you. But this is going to be the area when we get westerly winds over the east, uh, eastern Pacific that kind of coalesce right here. And then you get this whole turning. This is what we call our monsoon gyre. This is when it typically really starts picking up. Usually this last half of May into early June, we start getting early season tropical development here uh, because of that monsoon gyre. In this case, this is going to be the start of the hurricane season shortly after uh, once we go all the way into June the 1st, and we can see not, nothing really much being picked up on the global computer model, the GFS, through June 1st, which is good because I am going on vacation to Mendocino, which is just south of Fort Bragg in California, and I would really hate to see anything um, develop when I'm gone away from my office because, you know, I'm here to track hurricanes, not to be on vacation, but it's a family vacation, so I gotta, I gotta follow what the family wants me to do. So that's what I'm going to be doing between the 29th of May and the 3rd of June. So I'll be gone for nearly six or seven days. I'll see if I can make a video on my iPad once or twice during my vacation time, because that's how much I do care about you all, and that's how much I care about the tropics. So again, nothing much other than maybe some little wiffly waffly, little bent back little trough over here in the Central Caribbean. But again, things quiet for the time being on the 12Z GFS model. Now, as far as sea surface temperatures go, I'm going to try to include this in every one of my outlooks. We do have really warm sea surface temperatures. Again, they're warming up pretty nicely in the Caribbean. We got low to mid 80 sea surface temperatures in some areas over here, like the Island of Youth, the Bay of Youth, as well as Southern Florida. We have sea surface temperatures nearing uh, the upper 80s, so about 29, 30 Celsius. We got 29 to 30 Celsius down here in the Bay of Campeche. I'm just letting you all know that everything is open pretty much and ready to go for the season. It's just a matter of time when the atmosphere will cooperate. Sea surface temperature anomalies are also pretty significant all throughout this region, anywhere between 2 to 3 Celsius above average. We're looking at 2 to 3 Celsius in the Bay of Campeche, as well as the Gulf of Mexico, the island of youth, including for southern Florida near the Bahamas. We're very warm. And this is going to be interesting. This has really started warming up over the last couple of days. So now we really don't have a horseshoe shape. Instead, we have just this big old blob of really warm water. It'll be interesting, though, on what this ha how this occur or how this will all evolve over the next couple of months up here just to the south of Greenland. If we end up having a lot of warm water throughout the deep tropics of the Atlantic, well, it's across here, but throughout much of the Atlantic, 
that's going to play a different role on how active our season could actually end up being. But nevertheless, very far above average in terms of sea surface temperatures with a La Nina that continues to be an issue here. Look at this. This really has developed very quickly over the Eastern Pacific. We're now beginning to see negative three and a half to four degrees Celsius of waters already perking up below the surface or from below the surface to the surface of the ocean. So definitely well below average and definitely fits the criteria of a fairly strong La Nina that is already developing here in the El Nino 1 plus 2 region. Upper ocean heat content is pretty significant for the time of the year that we're in. We're only in May the 24th. 2024 and look at how far north this already gets this is pretty concerning and i've talked about this in my atlantic hurricane seasonal outlook yesterday how this is does not lead to hurricanes but this is kind of the jet fuel the octane fuel for hurricanes to get stronger than we typically see because there's a lot of upper ocean heat content there's a lot of heat energy being stored below the ocean deep down into these waters and the deeper the heat goes the more upper ocean heat content we actually get and in this case it is very deep anything in orange here is not just at the surface not shallow it's not able to be whisked away very easily instead this is pretty deep below the surface of the ocean. And this is going to lead to what could be a very concerning season, especially if we get any of these tropical waves that move across the Caribbean into the Gulf, things could get ugly very quickly. Another product that I always like to look at too in my discussions is the ECMWF Ensemble Prediction System. This is the velocity potential. I've discussed this in yesterday's video, what this actually means, and I'm going to go into as much detail as I can here briefly so this video doesn't end up being very long. But anything in green is upward motion. So I'm drawing arrows here, showing you guys all the upward motion that is going to be propagating into the Atlantic. And I'll show you where that is in just a second. But all these green colors are upward motion. This is all sinking motion. So air being uh, or sinking from higher altitudes to lower altitudes, this is suppressed convection because when the air sinks, it warms adiabatically and it dries out adiabatically as well. This is a suppression for thunderstorms. We get more Saharan dust. We get a lot more wind shear under this environment. So we can see where there's rising motion, where there's sinking motion in orange colors. And down here is the map right down here we can see so simply so simply to put it the atlantic is or where we really want to pay close attention to is this area right in here roughly okay in terms of latitude or longitude speaking okay and that's this area okay so from africa all the way over to say the gulf of mexico is this whole basin and from about, say, let's take a look here. So this is roughly from about, I would say, June the 5th or the 6th, right after I get back from my vacation, we're going to have to really start watching what develops in the, in the Atlantic. And this could go all the way, and I, I'm not kidding, all the way into late June. So pretty much the entire month of June, we got to really start looking for tropical development potentially in this window. Okay, right here, I'm going to kind of crisscross this, kind of highlight this whole area right in here where we really have to start watching for any tropical development because of all this rising motion, enhanced thunderstorm convection, more rainfall that is anticipated usually under this kind of environment. Another way to look at this too um, on a map perspective is again, uh, this is all the way from June the 12th all the way through June the 17th, 2024. Again, all of this rising motion throughout the main development region, which runs again from right in this area, has a lot of upward motion. Enhanced thunderstorm convection, more rainfall, more moisture to be exerted into the atmosphere. So this is in the next, uh, this is a five-day average. So when we look at our uh, next, our kind of our last week of June into early July, we still, again, have some of that upward motion into the atmosphere. So again, 
we could be looking at a fairly busy period coming up from about the second first maybe the second week especially the second week of june until perhaps even into very early july into late june time frame because of our velocity potential a lot of upward motion a lot more upward motion over africa that sends more tropical waves eastward or westward and these could develop into tropical storms or hurricanes and this time of the year some of these could make a run into the caribbean and really take full advantage of that upper ocean heat content then eventually they could either turn north or just continue on more of a westerly heading like we had with uh brett last year now before i do close out the discussion i thought that it would be really good and educational if i did provide this all to you so get ready for the atlantic hurricane season it is just around the corner hurricane preparedness is very important get moving when a storm threatens you it could be in florida or it could be in texas or it could be louisiana mississippi alabama along the gulf coast or even along the eastern seaboard including the states of Car the carolinas virginia if you're in Maryland, if you're in Delaware, New Jersey, New York, make sure you are ready if a storm threatens you. Protect your home, cover windows, secure doors, and loose items. Determining sheltering options and consider your pets. Ready uh, your go bag, so make sure you have a go, uh, a, uh, go bag, meds and supplies, charge your phones to the full, fill up, charge your vehicle, because if you don't charge your phone, then you won't get any updates. So make sure you charge the, your cell phone so you get my updates here on YouTube and also along the National Hurricane Center as well. Help your neighbors, especially the elderly and other vulnerable people, follow evacuation orders if given, please, okay? I cannot stress enough, this is really important information that I'm providing you. And of course, you do not want to be straddling the streets when flood waters approach. There could be a lot of toxic chemicals, biohazards in the water so please make sure you stay out of the water don't be straddling around if you have evacuated only return home when directed it's safe to do so remain vigilant as hazards remain heat down power lines flooded waters and more by the way if there's a live power line hitting the water you could be or you will be electrocuted because electricity goes through water and water is a great conductor for that clean up safely don't push yourself and check on neighbors okay please checking on neighbors um oh well it says here don't push yourself and check on neighbors sorry about that only use generators outdoors 20 plus feet from your home because again generators give out toxic gases when the combustion process is complete and then prepare for the likelihood that help and communications may not be available due to down tele uh, telegraphic towers and other utility lines as well now another quick shout out that i wanted to do really quickly before closing out this discussion is i want to give a special shout out to weather nazario and pat's path predictor also, they are the ones that are also um, predicting a very busy Atlantic hurricane season, and they're also making daily discussions on the tropics as well. So be sure you go subscribe to their channels right now while also subscribing to this YouTube channel, David Schlotthauer here on YouTube. Hit the bell notification icon, hit the like button, and also leave a comment in the section below this video. Once again, go check out Weather Nazario on YouTube, link in the description, and go check out Pat's Path Predictor. Link is also in the description below this video. Until next time, I'll be back with you more in a couple of days with another tropical weather outlook, likely on Sunday.